Okay, so this time, not many instructions left to do now. So I think all I've got left is these shift instructions and a few others. So I'm gonna go attack the shift instructions next. Probably gonna do arithmetic shift left. This operation shifts all the bits of the accumulator or memory contents one bit left. Seems quite simple. Bit zero is set to zero, bit seven is placed in the carry flag. There we go. So it just explains how you might use it. And is there anything weird about it? I don't think so. Negative flag is set if bit seven is, so if, if it's negative. Uh, zero flag is set if it's zero. And the carry flag is set to bit seven, and that's really it. So it's quite a simple instruction. It doesn't have a full complement of addressing modes. It does have these ones that don't take, yeah, these don't take any extra cycles because they don't offset or anything. Yeah, so let's have a crack at that one. So, uh, but just before I do it, do a bit of tidy up on the stuff I did before. Add with carry, it's not much. I just want to rename this because it's not, an add with carry test anymore. It's a add subtract with carry tests, yeah. Let's just do that. And the file's still called add with carry test, but I'll leave that as it is for now. So that's it for that. So first thing I want to do is I'll make a unit test file just for the shifts. Okay, so I've just copied a previous test and deleted everything. So we'll do arithmetic shift left first, and it's got a few different modes. It's got one that just works on the accumulator. Maybe we should try that one first, because uh, that's the easiest one. So, so the instructions just SL. This one doesn't have any other data that goes with it. It takes two cycles. What do we expect at the end of this? So it affects the carry, the zero, and the negative flag. So, so this uh, can shift the value of one. Let's do a really simple test to start with. Um, and we need to put something in the accumulator for this one. So let's just put the value one in there. So what do we expect at the end of this? We expect the accumulator to have been shifted left by one, which in effect doubles it. So we expect the accumulator to be two. We expect the carry flag to be false because it was a zero in the negative bit and it's shifted left. Uh, shifted into the carry, so it should be a zero into the carry. What else is there? Zero flag should be false, because uh, two is not zero, and the negative flag should be false. So I think that's a reasonable test to start with. It just takes, yeah, it just affects the accumulator in this case. Um, so let's just see that we can get that to compile. We need to add this instruction. It's zero A. Oh, what have I done there? Not this undeclared. Why is that undeclared? Whoops, double comma. That's weird. Okay. So there we go. So instruction not handled. So let's go in and put that one in straight away. Let's put it down at the bottom. So this one doesn't actually read anything from memory, it just works on the accumulator itself. So we can take the accumulator and let's shift it into, we need to take the accumulator and shift it left by one. That's the first thing. So let's see what that's fixed. 
oh local variables not used that would go back into the accumulator let's just see what that fixes or what we're left with instruction zero not handle oh because it's didn't oh it didn't consume a cycle this consumes a cycle to do it let's try that now yeah, so we're not setting the carry zero and negative. But other than that, it looks like that's fixed the problem. So uh, do we have a set? We have a set zero negative flags uh, from particular value from the A register. So we can just call that, I think, because it, yeah, it just sets the zero and negative. That's it. And then it's just the carry flag is not being set. So the carry flag gets set to bit seven. So that's bit seven before. So we need to find out what bit seven was before we started this operation. We have a negative flag. Oops. So the carry is, uh, let's just see. So that is the result of the carry. That's how the carry flag gets set. We just mask off the negative bit and set it if it's greater than zero and unset it if it's not. So an easy way of doing this and then I can just do this. I think that's it. I think that's gonna fix it. There we go. So yeah, so all I've done is I've taken the carry flag from the negative flag bit because bit seven in this case happens to be the bit that we're gonna shift out. And then I've shifted that left by one, and this is gonna fill the zeros in anyway for us. And then this function just sets the zero and negative flag for us, and we continue a cycle. So that's pretty good. I wonder if we can do a test that will shift into the, let me see, into something into the carry flag, and also set a negative. So let's do something a bit weirder, sure, can shift a negative value. Let's just say that. So that's a slightly different test. So in this case, we want something that's gonna be, it's gonna have a one in the, that's the carry bit, oh, sorry, the negative flag. We'll put a one there as well um, next to it. So that will, when that's shifted over, that will give us a negative number. Um, two. And then we'll put just a one somewhere here, like that. So when that's finished, we would expect the negative to be true, zero to be false, and the carry to be true as well. And the result uh, is going to be shifted over, boop, like that, with a zero there. Huh, that's a good way of doing it. So I think this should pass. Yeah, it does. So I'm probably not going to do any more tests on that. It's quite a simple one, arithmetic shift left. I think we need to do the next one. I need to do one that does at least something out of memory and get this five cycle thing correct. So let's duplicate those. So this is zero page X. Oh no, just do zero page, not zero page X. These are five cycles. And change the instruction. So how are these ones going to work? So what these need is just a value in the zero page straight after a uh, value straight after it is an address in the zero page and that address in the zero page is where we are going to put the value that we want to operate on. So in this case, that's where the one goes. So this doesn't affect the accumulator, this affects the actual contents of the memory. 
So the accumulator doesn't matter on this one. It's just really about what's in this part of memory here. So that changes to that. It becomes the two. And we want something similar for this test as well. And it's the memory location is where we're going to test from. So all I've done is just refactor those tests. So they're the zero page versions of them. So let's just see. I think that needs, yeah, that's got to be defined. As zero six. So two failing tests. Yes. They don't set the value correctly, I think. Oh, they, they probably do all kinds of weird things because they don't consume enough cycles at the moment. So let's start implementing those. First thing I've got to do is get the zero approach address. There we go. Then I've got to read the bytes. Two things, and then I need to write the byte back into the. I need to write this value after we've changed it back into the memory address. So that just does. That does nothing basically, because it just reads the value and then writes it back. We doesn't actually change it. I wish this hadn't scrolled off. <laughs> it's just like, can't even see it. Uh, it's still failing, but we don't know why it's failing. Uh, I think this is where we need to create a, we'll create a temp there. We will do the temp this time. So we've done the shift now. So we should be getting the correct answer, but I can't see what values there are. No way of getting this. I'm going to have to step into it. Oh, because it's throwing an exception. That's the problem. Damn. Because it's not consuming enough bytes. I wish this thing wasn't just scrolled off so I could actually read it. Yeah, so we're reading the address. We're getting the upper round of one, we're shifting it, and we're writing it. And yeah, we're not consuming enough cycles to do it, so it's going around and uh, doing instruction not handled. Okay, that's fine. So, yeah, we do need to take a cycle for doing our operation in here. So that's the next thing. Is that better? Still can't see the results. This is super annoying. Memory, the result is correct. Carry flag is wrong, I haven't said it. Zero flag is wrong. Negative flag is wrong. Okay, so we're just not setting our flags, which is what I expected. I just couldn't see it. It's pretty annoying. So let's do those to start with. Set zero negative. We just need to set the carry as well. And the carry needs to be set from before. Let's do it like that. There we go. So this might be where I could factor that part out. 
into another little function because that is just what we need to do the same in this one, isn't it? Yeah, we could do it. And then in that one, we could just write the value afterwards. So that's what I might do if this passes, which it does. So I will factor this out now. Yeah, because I'm doing the correct thing there. Let's factor this out into a arithmetic shift left. Another lambda at the top. There's a big function this now. these do we? Need cycles. And this one actually returns the result. I think that's right. So I've just factored that out into its own function so that we can call it down here. So this will replace all this bit here. There we go. So is that still pass? Yes, it does. And we can use that same thing up here, uh, which just does it on the A register. And it goes back into the A register. So that, that one becomes that. Let's see if that works. Yes. So I think that's, um, that's pretty much this here is how we're just gonna do the rest of them because these are, these other ones are just going to have to be the same thing but with different addressing modes. I think one thing we need to make sure is that this cycles thing, correct, is this zero page one? Yeah, that might be the only bit that might trip up is maybe some of these ones we've got uh, have different number of cycles. We just got to make sure we call the right one when we do the addressing mode. So I'm just going to go warp speed now and do the rest of these um, addressing modes for for the arithmetic shift left. Okay, so that's it. So that is the five addressing modes done for arithmetic shift left. That one was quite an easy one actually, especially compared to doing the add and subtracts recently. These ones seem so much simpler, but that's it. So it's really good. So next time I'll just move on and do logical shift right or rotate left or one of the other ones. These are all gonna be quite similar actually, but yeah, that's quite good. So catch you in the next one.